and the people that he brought in. If y'all tell me if I'm lying, Quincy Jones brought in Fresh Prince. And his first movie was what? Six Degrees of Separation. He brought in Queen Latifah. Set it off. Queen Latifah set it off, licking and kissing on women. Are you following me? Will Smith has been in the spotlight recently, and for once it doesn't have to do with his marriage troubles with Jada Smith. This time, the actor is in hot waters for allegedly sleeping with Dwayne Martin. However, according to the latest rumors, Quincy Jones might be the one to blame for it all. The streets are saying that Jones might have introduced Will to a life of male freak-offs. And you know who else was recently exposed for male freak-offs? Diddy. These latest rumors have brought Will's sexuality into question, as well as Quincy's role as a producer. Just what has Jones been up to these years? And did Will really participate in these men freak-offs? Welcome back to Celebrity Buzz, where we will be talking about how Will Smith opened up on Quincy Johns, luring him into G-word rituals with Diddy. But before we give you the deets, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos. It's ridiculous, right? Um, and it's nonsense. And this is a person that tried a, a shakedown, a money shakedown that didn't work. We're going to take legal action. Will Smith is easily one of the biggest stars in the industry right now, despite all the controversy he's been involved in over the years. And the one who put him on the map is none other than Quincy Jones. I met Quincy Jones. I met Quincy years Jones. Yeah, yeah, Quincy. Yeah, he's uh, that. That is my guy right there. It's like. Uh, uh, he picked me up uh, and, and ma made me into a fresh prince, you know. It, it was, uh, his, his birthday was the day of the, the, for the fresh prince when I found out. I was like, it's a long story. Before Will and Jones crossed paths, Will was already a big name in the industry. He had made some serious cash along with DJ Jazzy Jeff, but the wealth got to his head. He ended up blowing all his money on cars and motorcycles even closing out the Gucci store in Atlanta. In the end, he owed the IRS $3 million. Speaking about the situation, Will said, We released our next album and it was like a flop. It was a tragedy, it went like double plastic. I had spent all my money and I didn't forget, but I didn't pay the IRS. In my mind, I wasn't trying to avoid taxes. I was just like, damn, they need their money. The IRS took all that stuff, so I was like, broke, broke, broke. Being famous and broke is a shitty combination because you're still famous and people recognize you, but they recognize you while you sitting next to them on the bus. Luckily, Will met Benny Medina at the time who ended up taking Will to Joan's birthday party in December 1989. The men got talking and somehow Will ended up auditioning for Quincy. While recounting the night, Will said, so we go in and he said, where are you from? I said, I'm from Philly. He replied, your character's from Philly. I'm like, okay. So like it's Quincy's birthday, so like it's a big party, so everybody's in there. It was Brandon Tartikoff, the head of NBC, network vice president Warren Littlefield, all of that. So everybody gets in the room and Quincy says, hey, clear the living room out. We're gonna do an audition. In the end, Will gave his audition at the birthday party and what do you know, Jones was impressed. And that's how Will landed his career-breaking role in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. However, fans think that Will did more than audition for Quincy if you catch our drift. You see, also present at the party that night was American singer Tevin Campbell, and there have been rumors that Quincy essayed Tevin. Although Campbell later shut down the rumors, Quincy's slate is far from clean. You see, Jones has been accused of doing the same thing to rapper Tupac. Back then, Tupac was dating Kidada, Jones' daughter, and in his last year, he left his label Death Row Records and joined Quincy's label. Now the two were set for working together, but Quincy apparently asked Tupac for a sexual favor, and that's when the rapper decided to pack his bags. Now Tupac did speak about Jones' shady deal in an interview with Angie Martinez. But guess what? Angie never aired that interview. She only released 12 minutes of the interview footage when Tupac had sat down for two hours with her. Let's talk about women for a second. Two oh, women who I, I'm going to tell you something. I love women. I'm, I'm a bit, jail has made me appreciate women. But I hate bitches even more. Angie said that she didn't release the footage because according to her, Tupac said some controversial things and she didn't want to fuel the East and West Coast War. While speaking about the issue, Angie said, I went with my gut. 
I didn't know how it was going to work out. I was scared to air this interview and I didn't want to be responsible for making it worse. And the truth is that I made that decision and I'm proud of that after all these years later. I think about the tragedy that happened to both Tupac and Biggie. Like, what if I'd have put that out? I would have forever wondered if I had contributed in any way to what happened, even though it may not have. Ultimately, it happened anyway, but I know that I did what I could do to not contribute to it. That gave me strength. And just when you thought it couldn't get worse, it did. Professor Griff came forward and said that Jones has a lot more skeletons in the closet. I think the thing that raised some eyebrows with people is when I dropped the information about Quincy Jones. I let the chips fall wherever they fall. That's right. Fall this dude was one of the ones responsible. He had a magazine financed by Warner Brothers and arrested him. He set up sex rings in Hollywood. Quincy Jones set up those sex rings and Quincy Jones had called Tupac in to go through the homosexual ritual and when he turned him down, when he turned Quincy Jones down and Quincy Jones found, found out that he was engaged to Quincy Jones's daughter, that's when Tupac was mocked for death. He said that the male freak-offs are actually part of a ritual that executives have upcoming artists perform in return for fame and popularity. When I, when I, I ran into Tupac um, one night and we was hanging out and you know, I think I must have caught him on one of them nights where it was one of them wild nights because dude was like smoking, had a little something, blah, 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 blah. And he didn't stop there. Professor Griff also took some shots at the Will Smith controversy. According to him, Jones had Will perform these same rituals. He pointed out that after meeting Quincy, Will's first big movie was Six Degrees of Separation, where he played a G-word con artist. It seems like Professor Griff may have been telling the truth all along because recently, Will's former assistant brother Bilal came forward with some shocking details about the actor. According to him, Will had a sexual encounter with fellow actor Dwayne Martin while Bilal worked for him. He walked in on them going at it in the dressing room. So it looks like Will learned a thing or two under Quincy because he kept on with the G-word rituals. It seems like Hollywood has a serious problem when it comes to these rituals. The internet found itself in an uproar following Cassie's lawsuit against Diddy. You see, Cassie revealed that Diddy had a thing for male freak-offs. According to her, Diddy would hire male prostitutes and force Cassie to do explicit things with them. Between what Cassie's lawsuit revealed and what Professor Griff revealed about Quincy Jones, Hollywood has some dark secrets. One fan said, it's true. Other Hollywood actors have confirmed they must submit to this G-word ritual if they want to be hired and given roles in the business. Another fan said, it's crazy. I heard the Tupac interview about Quincy Jones propositioning him, but when I commented about this on forum, they didn't believe me and wanted proof. I went looking for that audio on the internet but could never find it. Will Smith is yet to address the rumors. It doesn't seem like Jada is gonna leave Will over the Dwayne Martin rumors. She's been defending him. Hopefully, the truth coming to light can put an end to these rituals because the elite have taken advantage of up-and-coming artists in the industry for long enough. And that's all for today. What do you think of the situation? Did Quincy actually lure Will? Is Jada going to do something? Are more people going to come forward against Quincy? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos. We will see you next time with more updates from the celebrity world.